And like I said, it was literal. It was two teams, literal equations. And basically, what um, when they talk about literal equations, is that what it said on the top of the worksheet? I don't have that, so I guess I can't ask you. Basically, what you're doing with literal equations is you are you are manipulating the equation to solve for different variables. In other words, in other words, this you, you've done this before. The the formula for distance distance equals rate times time. Correct. How fast you are going, you're going 20 miles an hour, you go for 5 hours, you went 100 miles. Well, when they talk about this, they want you to take an equation that looks like this, that isn't necessarily all numbers, that has a bunch of letters in it, and try to rearrange it so that you solve for the letter R. Solve this equation for the letter R. If distance equals rate times time, then how would you solve for what rate equals? And you just have to remember, it's the fundamental rules of equations. Okay, How do I get the letter R by itself? Well, this is multiplication, so you do the opposite of multiplication. You divide by a T and divide this by a T. Rate has to equal distance divided by time. Or if you are solving for time, solve for T, then what would you do? You divide by rate. Time equals the distance you go divided by the rate you go. And that makes sense. If I went 100 miles, that's my distance, and my rate was 20 miles an hour, how much was my time? Five hours. So with when they talk literal equations, they want you to be able to manipulate and change those so that you solve for things. Now it gets a little more complicated when you get to something like this, but really it's all the same rules. Let's look at that one. Um, if I am taking this equation here, ax, yeah, that's good. ax plus by equals c, and they want us to solve for the letter y. Okay. We normally say you just want to isolate the variable that you want. Okay. So I want to get the letter y by itself, which means I've got to get rid of both this b and this ax. Any suggestions on the first thing I should do? Just like with normal equations, when you're given the choice of whether you know this is, has to be division and this is addition and subtraction, what do we what do we do in equations, Jake? Uh, subtract like the AX. Yeah, you subtract this whole term first. I subtract AX. AX doesn't combine with the C. They're not, in no ways are they like terms, so you just put it at the end of it. C plus A, I'm sorry, C minus ax equals by. Stop me there if you didn't get that. I'm just moving this whole term. It's one term. You can't split it apart. We're gonna find. I subtract ax. I subtract ax. It's gone from this side. Now all I have to do is get rid of the b. How do I get rid of that b? Yeah, just divide by b. And you have to divide this whole side by b. Um, and here's, here's where things get a little dicey. This is your answer, uh, but you have to recognize the book or some places, some books will leave it like that, which is okay, and other ones might write it out like this. This means the same thing. C minus AX divided by B is the same thing as C divided by B minus AX divided by B. Uh, I don't think there's any rule, rhyme or reason as to which one anybody uses for what reason. I would think, I think this worksheet probably leaves it like that. Sometimes when you write it like this, it's easier to see what can be simplified into something easier. But this, these two things mean the same exact thing. Um, let's pick one here. Which one, five? Yeah, do five. Five's a good one. I like five. Five is a one. Number five says to take x plus y over three equals five and solve that for x. First thing you probably got to do is get make sure this is not a fraction anymore. To do that, 
This is x plus y divided by 3, so the opposite of dividing by 3 is multiply by 3. If I multiply this side by 3 over 1, 3 cross off. If I multiply this by 3, I get 15. So now x plus y equals 15. And to solve for x, then, I would, Gary Rodding, subtract y. Subtract y. So there's your answer. x equals 15 minus y. Uh, how about, maybe let's just look at the other side. 11 doesn't look that bad. 11 is b equals pi r squared h. b equals pi r squared h. Solving for h. Well, there's no addition to subtraction stuff there. It's all multiplication. So, Kelsey Edwards, I probably need to do what? Um, Bye. Um, well, this is multiplication, this is multiplication. Uh, to get rid of both of those, I'm just going to divide by both of those. Divide by both of those. So the letter H, these cross off, the letter H is going to equal V divided by pi r squared. I feel relatively confident that we something we don't let's see what else we got here. Do 17 for me. You just want me to do all your work and not even follow it. Yeah, I can. <laughs> there, relax. Just relax. Ah. I don't think we did much harder than this. Oh, yeah. I have to do one more for you. Solving that one for the letter B. A equals A plus B plus C over 3 for the letter B. First thing we would do is, Calvin, we have to multiply both sides by 3. So now I have 3a equals a plus b plus c. Then I have to get b by itself. I am now going to have to, Christian, uh, divide. Nope, there's no multiplication there. Sorry, we're not solving for A. Subtract what? Uh, B. Nope. A. B I want to be by itself. I subtract the A and I subtract the C. Uh, you probably need to do them each at one time, but it's going to look like this. It's going to be 3A minus A minus C. They can't be combined. And that all equals, what was I solving for B? They don't combine, not like terms to separate. Now, one, this one here is where I think sometimes you might run across something that looks like this. Write this one down. Uh, A equals H times B plus C, and they ask you to solve for the letter B. To which I'm going to tell you, since that B is stuck in that parentheses, um, well, <coughs> no, no, we can do this. Yeah, it's not that hard. What would you expose me to do? You want to get the letter B by itself. So, Gary, get rid of the parentheses. That's what I was thinking. Although looking at it, I don't, I believe you could, let's do it this way and I'll do it another way too. HB times plus HC, correct? Mm -hmm. Still solving for B, so the next thing I would do, Eli, is? Uh, divide. 
Nope. Yeah, I get rid of this first. Oh, subtract so You're going to subtract HC. So now you have A minus HC. Sorry, that was not equal. A minus HC equals HB. And then to get B by itself, there you're going to Michael Blue Hell. Divide by H. Divide by H. Now, here is where, children, remember when I said you could write it like that, or you could write it split apart? Here is where, again, based on whatever book it is, if you split this apart and write it as A divided by H minus HC divided by H, you could actually cross off these H's, and your answer would be A, divided, A over H minus C. And again, that's kind of... It's a, it's a tough call as to say as exactly what books ask for or do. Now, the other thing I was thinking was this, okay, which if you look at what we started with here, what Gary said was, was exactly what I was thinking, but then after I looked at it, the other way you could have done this, I'll do it smaller over here. This is kind of big. A equals H times B plus C. You could have, since this is multiplication, you could have divided both sides by H. So now I have A over H equals B plus C. And then all you have to do is subtract C. You still get this answer right here. But I was actually thinking this way too, but it's probably just an easy or easier to do it that way. Gosh, I thought that was cool.